Good morning. Today's lesson is 11.3. Quadrilaterals. Today's essential question, how can you classify and compare quadrilaterals? Unlock the problem. A seating chart for a baseball field has many four-sided figures, or quadrilaterals. What types of quadrilaterals can you find in the seating chart? There are five special types of quadrilaterals. You can classify quadrilaterals by their properties, such as parallel sides and perpendicular sides. Parallel lines are lines that are always the same distance apart. Perpendicular lines are lines that intersect and form right angles. So parallel would go like this. Actually, let me draw it. Parallel lines would go like this. And then perpendicular lines would go like this. They would intersect. So let's complete the sentence that describes each type of quadrilateral. Okay, a general quadrilateral has four sides and four angles. So one, two, three, four, and then there's four angles. Now, a parallelogram has opposite blank that are blank and parallel. So if you look, remember how there's one line here and one line here? That means that these two are the same or they're congruent. And these two have two lines and two lines. That means these two are the same and congruent. So a parallelogram has opposite sides, because how this is an opposite side, that are congruent. Okay, and then this is an opposite side that's congruent with that side. Now, a rectangle is a special parallelogram with four right angles. So here's one, two, three, four. Remember, a right angle is 90 degrees from yesterday. And four pairs of, and these are perpendicular slides. Perpendicular. Okay. Because see how these two are congruent, and then these two are congruent, and they are perpendicular to each other? Now, a square is a special parallelogram with four congruent sides. See, these ones are all congruent. This one, it just had two congruent sides on that side and two congruent sides on this one. But this one, all four are congruent, and it has four right angles. So there's my four right angles. Remember, right angles are 90 degrees. Now, a rhombus is a special shape. Pelogram, or parallelogram with four congruent sides. So you can see right there, see how they have the one dash, there are four congruent sides. And then a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel lines. So if you look, this line right here will always continue to go straight and never intersect. Now these, on the other hand, eventually they're going to come up and they're going to intersect. It's so it has one parallel, whereas the these see two parallels, two parallels, parallel, parallel. Same here. These are parallel and those are parallel. But a trapezoid only has um, one pair of parallel. So the types of quadrilaterals that you can find in a seating chart um, on the field are... A parallelogram, a rectangle, rhombus, square, and a trapezoid. And that was from up above here, okay, in this little diagram. So you can use the Venn diagram to sort quadrilaterals and find out how they're related. Draw the diagram below on your math board, or you can just draw on your actual book. Cut out the quadrilaterals and sort them in the Venn diagram. I'm just going to have you draw them. Record your work by drawing each figure you have placed in the Venn diagram below. So, for example, a rhombus. So, let's draw a rhombus. It is a parallelogram. So, here's my rhombus. Not a very good rhombus. <laughs> um, and a rhombus is sometimes a square. Okay, so sometimes a rhombus can be a square. Um, a parallelogram is sometimes a rectangle and a rhombus is always a parallelogram and a trapezoid is never a parallelogram and the reason it's never a par parallelogram is because remember the trapezoid actually let me uh, move this up oops 
sometimes, sometimes, always, never. Remember that um, the trapezoid is has only two sets of a, a parallel. It only has one set of parallelogram sides, this one and this one. But these two sides are going to intersect at some point, okay? Um, and then a square is always a rhombus, all right? So explain why the circle for the parallel, and I didn't actually draw all of them, so let me draw them in here. So here's a rectangle, here's another rectangle, here's a rhombus, here's another rhombus, um, and then here's a square. It can also look kind of diamond shaped if it's turned on its side. And then out here we would have these non-parallelograms. Okay, and I, I do have a cut out of that. Hopefully I run it off before our lesson. But let's do this next one. It says, explain why the circle for parallelograms does not intersect the circle for trapezoids. And the reason I already explained it over here, but a parallel parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides and a trapezoid only has one pair. So if you look here, you know, that one and that one can go on and on forever without meeting. Same here, that side and that side can go on and on without meeting. But in a trapezoid, only these two sides are parallel and these two sides are going to eventually intersect. The next one asks, Okay, so for homework, they want you to classify the quadrilateral in as many ways as possible. So you're going to write quadrilateral, parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, square, or trapezoid. So for example, on this one, they said that it has four sides, so that's a quadrilateral. Um, but on this particular shape, it had no other classification, right? Because it doesn't have the two perpendicular lines, it doesn't have congruent sides. So let's look at this one. So this one has four sides, so we know it's a so we know it's a quadrilateral. So we know it's a quadrilateral. Uh, we also know that it has two sets of parallel lines, right? So we know it's a parallelogram. And we know that it is a rhombus, right? So you're gonna do the same thing on the rest of them. You can use a partner or you can come and ask me as well. I just wanted to remind you on some of the quotes. So remember, these are like right angles. You know, that's four right angles. We know that that one single line and that single line are congruent, and we know that that double line and that double line are congruent. Same with angles. This one has a single and that one has a single, so these are the two same angles. But on these two, these have two lines, so we know these two are congruent to each other, but they're not necessarily congruent to that one. Just a quick reminder. All right, good luck. If you need any help, you know where I'm at.